Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about Aperture's tethering feature and exactly how Primat fits into that so you can do event photography or live sessions, for example, like Little League photos or kiosks or anywhere where you have any live event happening and you want to do green screen photography on the fly. So it's a great workflow, so let's dive into it and check it out. So the first thing that you need to do is connect your camera to the computer. In this case, I've got a Canon 5D Mark II connected to my MacBook Pro here. And that's just using a USB cable, which is what the Canons use. And I think most cameras use USB, although there may be some that use like FireWire or something like that. But in this case, we're connected via a USB cable. And what that means is if I go to File and go to Tether and Start Session, is going to pull up this dialog box. And what we want to do is capture the images into the Aperture Library, because what's going to be happening is as we shoot the camera, those images are going to be downloaded directly straight into Aperture, where we can apply Primat to them, and then go ahead and print them or save them, whatever we want to do. So we want to get them into the Aperture Library. We're going to save them with a custom name. If you want, you can add metadata into them. Uh, you can back them up to different folders, but we're not really going to worry about any of that in this tutorial. It doesn't really affect us one way or the other. One thing we do want to make sure of is that Show HUD is selected, which is the heads-up display. And what that means is when I click on Start Session, it's going to pop up this dialog box that's going to show me what my camera is, what the destination project is, in this case, it's Tether Tutorial, which is this project in my library. And you can see how many shots we've taken, what the last shot was, and so on. And so the first step is to click on the Capture button. That's going to fire the camera, import the image, and we can start working on it. So now that I've got the image of my model in here, I'm going to go up to Photos and do Edit with Plugin and go to Primat. And I'm not going to go over too much of the basics of Primat. Uh, those are very adequately described in other tutorials. And, but the main point is that I have AutoMask automatically turned on. So when I pull this image into Primat, it's automatically pulling the key. If there are any problems, of course, we can make adjustments or we can deal with color spill or whatever. But in this case, it's a really nice shot. The green masks out really nicely. And we should be good to go. And so I like this background. And I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And this will take us back out to Aperture. You can see that I've got my friend here against the background that we selected. And now we can go ahead and save this. It's already saved in our library. Or if we want, we can go to File and do Print Image if we're doing this. If we want to give the subject that we're taking a shot of instant photos, we can now go to one of our custom presets here, one of our layouts, and just go ahead and print this out. Now, some of these come with Aperture. There are plenty of third parties that will also sell you layout packages. Any of those will work. You're simply using Aperture's print dialog box. And so if I want to print these out, I could just go ahead and click on print. In this case, I do not, so we're just going to click cancel. I'm happy just having it saved. And then the next thing I want to do is take another shot. So I'm going to go click on Capture again. That's going to pull in my second image. And once again, we can just go ahead and select this. Go to Edit with Plugin, select Primat. And that's going to pull her into Primat again. You can see that we've got a pretty nice key going on. Uh, we've got one problem in that the background needs to be repositioned. So of course we can do that. Select my position here, select backdrop, and I'm going to scoot that up. And actually, I want to put her on a different background. So you can see that in our backdrop section, we actually have two different backgrounds selected here. So I can click on the bottommost one, and I'm going to bring that to front by clicking on the F button here. And I'm actually going to scale this up a little bit. And reposition it a bit and add in a bit of a blur, which see right here. Let's scoot the interface up a little bit, and I can add a little bit of a blur to my background. 
and that's a great shot. You can see that we have all the tools within Primat that we can use within our tethered workflow. If we want to make changes to the background, say we've got three or four different backgrounds and you're allowing the client to select which background they'd like to be in front of, it's very easy to make that change. Just click on the background, click on bring it to front, and we can move those around, select different ones. We can add a background blur to those backgrounds. And even if we have problems, like for example, we have a little bit of grunginess down here where the mask isn't quite perfect, and we can grab our clean background tool and just click on that, and that'll make all that stuff go away. Let's grab our box tool there. And that makes that little grungy noise stuff go away. And now we're good to go. So we can just go ahead and click OK. This will take us back out to Aperture. You can see that we now have our other shot here. Of course, we can print that out or it's saved within Aperture if we want to do something with it later. And that's pretty much it. And you can just kind of keep repeating that as long as you like. Just keep hitting Capture. That'll bring in a new photo. Apply Primat to it and then print it or save it, and then just repeat and repeat and repeat. So it's a very easy way of working with live events. It gives you all the power of Aperture, gives you the amazing green screen technology that's within Primat, and just makes for a very streamlined workflow. So hopefully you found this informative. We have plenty of tutorials on digitalanarchy.com, which will explain all the workings and all the features of Primat itself. But in this tutorial, we really just wanted to talk about the tethering feature of Aperture and how Primat fits into that so you guys can do live events successfully using Primat. So thank you for joining me and see you in the next tutorial.